Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about quadratic inequalities. The only things you need to know going into this video are how to factor a quadratic and how to use the quadratic formula. So a quadratic inequality is an inequality that involves a quadratic, or an inequality that's involving a polynomial of degree 2. In other words, it's going to look like one of these four items here. Sometimes you do have to manipulate what you're given so that it does have this form. In other words, I have my quadratic on the left and my zero on the right, but that kind of manipulation is pretty straightforward. The solutions of x will be based on the roots of these polynomials, which we already know how to do, because of factoring and the quadratic formula. So really the way these problems are going to go is we're going to find roots of these quadratics, and then we're going to use these roots to tell us information. Let's run through some examples. We're going to solve the quadratic inequality x squared minus 2x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. I want the roots of this quadratic, so I'll go ahead and try factoring it into x plus 1 times x minus 1. Now I can go ahead and read off the roots of this quadratic. The quantity x plus 1 tells me that x equals to negative 1 is a root, and the quantity x minus 1 tells me that x equals positive 1 is also a root. So I'll go ahead and put these on a number line. Since I'm solving an inequality, I'm not done yet. The roots just help us find our answer. The problem is asking us to find when x squared minus 2x plus 1 is greater than 0. What that means is, when is this polynomial a non-negative number? Since negative 1 and positive 1 are roots, we know that plugging these roots in to the polynomial gives us a 0. So what other numbers can we plug in, and will they give us a positive number or a negative number? Well, the roots are going to tell us what numbers we can start testing. The idea is we are going to take numbers around negative 1 and positive 1 and plug those into our polynomial and see if our answer is positive or negative. This kind of strategy is commonly referred to as the test point method. Our roots are sort of our benchmarks here, so to pick our test points we need to pick a number to the left of negative 1, in between negative 1 and positive 1, and then to the right of positive 1. I gotta make sure the numbers I'm picking aren't my roots. I can pick any number I want, so I'll stick with negative 2, 0, and 2. Again, I'm picking these points because they exist around and between my roots, and these are numbers that I can plug into my polynomial to see if I'm positive or negative. Notice that if I try plugging in negative 2 into our polynomial, or into the factored form, I get an answer of positive 3, which is greater than 0. We're looking for x values that make our polynomial greater than 0, so I found one, and it happens to be negative 2. Now let's try plugging in 0. When I do so, I get negative 1, which is not greater than or equal to 0, so this part of the number line I don't want. Last, I'll plug in positive 2 and get an answer of 3, which is again greater than or equal to 0. So this is a part of the number line that I want as well. We already know the roots of this polynomial are negative 1 and positive 1, which means that those are the only numbers I can plug into this polynomial and get 0 as an answer. Any other number will give me a positive number or a negative number. But by using these test points, I know which part of the number line gives me positive numbers and which parts of the number line give me negative numbers. Let's fill in the segments of the number line that are giving us positive numbers, because, again, this problem is asking us to find when this polynomial is greater than zero. Converting this picture into interval notation, I get negative infinity to negative one included, unioned with one to infinity, where one is included as well. I'm including negative one and positive one into this interval, and I'm also shading it into the number line because the problem is asking us to find where the polynomial is greater than or equal to zero. So, my roots would be included. Let's do another example. Consider the polynomial 9x times x plus 1 is less than 10. This isn't quite in the form we want, so let's do a little algebra. I'm going to distribute the 9x across the sum, and I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides to get a revised inequality of 9x squared plus 9x minus 10 is less than 0. Again, my strategy was to get everything to one side and 0 on the other side, and I've successfully done so. 9x squared plus 9x minus 10 factors into 3x minus 5 times 3x plus 2. So I write this factored form of the inequality less than 0. Like before, my next step is to find the roots of this polynomial. They turn out to be x equals 5 thirds and x equals minus 2 thirds. Then I simply place those roots on the number line, like so. Now I invoke the test point method. So I pick points around and between these roots to test and plug into my polynomial to see if I get positive or negative numbers. The goal of this problem is to find which x values make this polynomial less than 0, or negative, 
So I care about negative outputs and I don't care about positive outputs in this case. Some easy points to choose are 0, negative 1, and 2. Again, it doesn't matter which points I'm picking as long as they exist around and between all of my roots. Basically, the number of test points that you're picking is always one more than the number of roots you end up with. In our case, we had two roots, so we picked three test points. When I plug negative 1 into my factored form, I get an answer of positive 8, which is not less than 0. So, this portion of the number line to the left of negative 2 thirds, I don't care about. Now I'll plug in 0. When I plug in 0, I get an answer of negative 10, which is less than 0, which is exactly what I want. To wrap up, I'll plug in 2 into my factored form, and I get an answer of positive 8, which is again, not less than 0. Remember, it's the roots of this polynomial, namely minus 2 over 3 and 5 over 3, that are going to show up in my solution set. The test point method showed us that if I pick a number less than negative 2 thirds or greater than 5 thirds, then I don't end up with a number that's negative. So, what I want is the portion of the number line in between negative 2 thirds and 5 thirds. Since this inequality wants the polynomial strictly greater than 0, I actually do not include these numbers in my intervals. So I draw open circles above them in the number line, and then I write my interval as negative 2 thirds to 5 thirds with parentheses on both sides. Let's look at one more example where we actually don't factor. Solve the inequality 0 greater than or equal to 2x squared minus 5x plus 1. Recall the definition of the quadratic formula minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. If you don't know how to use this or need a refresher, I have a video on quadratic equations. I won't run through all the calculations right now, but if I take this polynomial and plug this information into the quadratic formula, I get roots of 5 plus minus the square root of 17 over 4, which simplify to 0 0.29 and 2.28. So I'll go ahead and place my roots on the number line. Just in case y'all are wondering, I definitely used a calculator to get those roots. There is no way I did that in my head, so definitely have a calculator with you when you're doing these kinds of problems. I'll choose my test points as 0, 1, and positive 3, because they exist around and between my roots. When I plug 0 into my polynomial, I get an answer of 1, which is not less than 0. Plugging in 1 gives me negative 2, which is less than or equal to 0, and then plugging in 3 gives me 4, which is not less than 0. So the portion of the number line that I want is between my two roots. The inequality in this problem is a less than or equal to sign, so I will shade in my circles, and when I write out my solution set, my interval will be closed at both ends. Therefore, my solution set is the closed interval from 5 minus square root of 17 over 4 to 5 plus square root of 17 over 4, and we're done.